Let's look at the dogs. If Ole Miss is the transfer portal champion, what does that make Georgia? Objectively, Georgia's losing the portal. Are the dogs the biggest losers in the portal right now? Yeah, they are because they've lost that much talent. Now, what will happen once Alabama's season is done, whether it's after a semifinal loss against Michigan or a national championship game appearance, victory or defeat, you're going to see more players enter the portal then as well. But Georgia losing the talent, it's lost. I'm not the first one to tell you all this. It was going to happen because it's happened the last two seasons. And Georgia did all right after those two seasons, won a national championship, made it to the SEC championship. And quite frankly, when you look at the 2021 season as well, Kirby Smart was very proud of the fact that the dogs didn't have to add anyone in the portal to win that national championship. Doesn't mean that they won't do it. Doesn't mean they haven't done it since. And they have a pretty good track record of it. But the dogs have lost a lot of talent. Uh, not to mention Dylan Riola. This is unrelated to the portal, but losing, potentially losing your top quarterback prospect to a flip to Nebraska kind of feels like a transfer portal uh, decision. Just before he signed his NLI, he decided to transfer to Nebraska, transfer his commitment, which he's already done a time or two. Well, that's neither here nor there. Let's look at Jamon Dumas Johnson who uh, surprised people with his decision. I said this over the weekend. We can't keep looking at transfer portal era decisions through a pre-transfer portal era lens. None of this has to make sense. There doesn't have to be context to it. The guy can just go. But I'll give you some context. Uh, Jamon Dumas Johnson specifically. What happens after... A team's uh, playoff hopes are done. The season's done. You're going to a bowl game, New Year's Six or otherwise, or you're not going to a bowl game at all. Coaches, the good ones, the elite ones, will sit down and they'll do performance reviews with every single player, not unlike you and your job uh, with sitting down with your boss. They sit down with you, chat 10, 20 minutes, uh, look at what you did, where you're headed, what's coming down the pipe for you, how you can be better, uh, how you were really good, all that stuff. If you've worked for a competent company or manager, you know that that's part of the business. You, you have a review and you look at what you did and you set some goals maybe. Well, this is no inside information. I'm just telling you how Kirby operates. He sits down with Jamon Dumas Johnson. He says, hey, Pop, um, you got hurt, okay? And that was a bummer. I've been honest with you before. Kirby was on the record saying that he had to hold Jamon Dumas Johnson accountable for some you know, questionable practice habits in spring and fall camp and said, hey, if you want to be a leader for this team, for this defense, you can't slow up like that in practice. Jamon Dumas Johnson responded to that. You look at how he plays. The guy's an oak tree. He's a bear, okay? Doesn't get much more physical than Jamon Dumas Johnson. But what happened to Pop? He got hurt, fractured a bone in his arm. So uh, you get next man up, Georgia's linebacker room, CJ Allen comes along. Smile Munden already there. You're 1A, you're 1B to your 1A or 1B, depending on how you want to look at it. And Georgia's linebacker room is still really good, whether or not Jamon Dumas Johnson comes back. But Kirby is honest. He's a good leader. You know, speaking of SEC media days, Kirby spoke about what it means to be a leader, and you're going to have to make decisions that people don't like. Well, Kirby was honest with Pop, probably told him, hey, uh, you're still our guy. You're still our leader, our quarterback of the defense. But I have to be honest with you, man. I can't keep these young pups off the field next season. I can't keep Allen off the field. I can't keep Raylan Wilson off the field. I can't keep Bowles off the field. That doesn't mean that you won't be on it at all, but they're going to be on it more. They're going to be on it more than they were this year, even when you were healthy. So I will present that information to you. We love you. You're welcome to be here. We're not running you off. 
that narrative is out there for Georgia fans, which is absolutely ludicrous. We're not running you off, Pop, but I got to be up front with you. And the great thing about Georgia, and it's not just Georgia, it's not just Kirby Smart, the staffs that care about their players, truly care about them, truly understand the stakes of what's happening in college football right now, are going to help them figure out where they want to go, whether it's to Kentucky, whether it's to Syracuse, uh, with Fran Brown, whether it's closer to home, whether it's Auburn, wherever you want to go, Georgia's going to help pave that road for you. And they don't have to do that. But that's the name of the game right now in college football. Nobody knows what's going on. Coaches don't know the best way to go about this any given year because the portal gets more hectic and crazier every year. But Georgia's going to do that. They're going to help Jamon Dumas Johnson figure out where he wants to go. They're going to help other players go where they want to go. Yazid Haynes going to Syracuse. Marvin Jones Jr. Brock Vandegrift. They're all getting the same treatment and probably getting the same feedback. Maybe it's a little bit different for a guy like Brock Vandergriff, a quarterback. Apparently, he had his mind made up that he was going to uh, hit the portal, regardless of what Carson Beck did. But uh, Georgia is class. They're top-notch at helping these players do what they want to do. And, and Kirby Smart's not alone in that because we're all figuring it out together here. Players, coaches, recruits, it's nuts. It's absolutely crazy and every single day is like Groundhog Day, wondering who's going to hit the portal, regardless of uh, what they could be doing next season, what they did last season. Anyone can go. Anybody can hit the road. But the craziest thing about the portal and Georgia that a lot of Georgia fans haven't come around on just yet is that that portal works both ways. Just because Georgia's losing players to it doesn't mean that they can't pick up London Humphreys or they can't pick up Trevor Etienne. Got a shot at Miami wideout Colby Young, reportedly as well. So yes, I can't couch this. Georgia is losing at the transfer portal. But big picture, that doesn't mean they're not winning. Because when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to transfer portaling, Georgia still evaluates talent and still recruits as good as, if not better than, every single college program in the country year in and year out. Yeah, other schools have their moments. They have their time to shine. But Georgia's hallmark right now is consistency. I know that the uh, signing day pomp and circumstance is not what it has been. Because now, as a fan, you're sitting there saying, all right, cool, we got this five-star running back. We got this four-star linebacker. Will he even be here in a year? So it loses its luster. But it still matters. It still matters to Kirby Smart and his staff. Uh, they're not throwing the towel in on that and just saying, well, signing day sucks, so let's just work the portal now. No, you can't do that. You can't do that now. And you can't do that if and when the transfer portal takes on some form of order, unlike it has now. Dogs are still doing it just as well as everybody else. Maybe one or two other teams who do it as good as Georgia as doing it is doing it year in and year out right now. 